Greetings, everyone. Thank you for tuning into Pronosis. My name is Pharaoh Simo Samana. I'm honored to be your guide. And today, I wanted to discuss spiritual identification, more specifically, spiritual renaming. And I wanted to talk about this because, well, I feel, not even I feel, we'll say arguably, okay? Language is probably the biggest rabbit hole you could ever go down. Um, I would say that the ability to communicate is probably the most profound aspect of existing and maybe even the most mysterious. Mysterious aspects being beyond the scope of this talk. But imagine how difficult it, any interaction would be if things within our world didn't have names to label them. Uh, it, I mean, the world would be nothing the way it is we know it to be. And you don't have to think hard about that to understand why that is so. Communication is a major catalyst towards expression. And there's probably not any better example of this than the birth name. Now, those of you with children will know how arduous choosing the name for a new human can be. And to those who don't have children, ask anyone you know with children how they chose the name they did. And more times than not, you'll be met with a story behind the name or the meaning of the name, if not both. N naming a human usually isn't done in haste. Some people spend months picking out the name for a baby. And like any word in any language, every name has a meaning. And choosing a name for a human is more times than not, it's an act of expression. And it's an act of expression by the ones choosing the name. For instance, some names are picked out as a sort of memoriam to a past loved one, like me. The name given to me at birth by those who raised me was Charles. Now, Charles was the name of my adoptive mom's grandfather. And her grandfather more than likely was given the name Charles based on the meaning of that name. This is what's called etymology. And without going too deep into it, the meaning of the name Charles is free man. And that meaning more than likely resonated with my great grandparents. Is that right? I don't know. But anyway, they named their son as such. So you might ask yourself, what's in a name? Well, a name, it's the foundation of your identity on earth. It's one of the first things we consciously and subconsciously attach to ourselves, but that's exactly what it is. It's an attachment. When we're born, we don't choose the name given to us. It's an expression of those who chose the name. And oftentimes, it's not so much relative to the expression of our soul and who we later grow to be. I think this could potentially have some major subconscious repercussions. Think about it. The name we choose to identify with, although with meaning, often has no meaning to us, to who we are. And if this is the case, then our identity is meaningless to us. We undergo constant change, so it's more likely than not that your birth name will well, it'll lose any true meaning that it had to you that you personally resonated with, if you ever did resonate with any meaning of it at all. And bearing in mind the constant change that we all go through, one of the most profound changes anyone could go through is a spiritual awakening. And that's because the, spiritual, the nature of a spiritual awakening well, it involves massive 
paradigm shifts. Uh, it leads to a completely new outlook on existence and most importantly, a new outlook on self, right? This is what I call spiritual re-identification. And this re-identification is why some people find it necessary to undergo a renaming, finding and choosing a name that relates to the soul of the newly awakened because awakenings are super transformative. And because of that transformative nature, John or Jane Doe might just not and probably won't feel like John or Jane Doe anymore. So you might be wondering what the process of this is. Well, first and foremost, different paths have different processes. Uh, regarding certain beliefs, say, a spirit name can or should only be given by one's mentor or a spiritual guide. In other instances, some claim their new name to have been given to them through visionary or meditative means, channeling, you know. And then there are those who seek it themselves. Not unlike the process that was most likely underwent to pick your birth name, but it's a little different. Um, when naming a baby, there are countless books you can refer to. They're filled with names and the meanings of those names. But oftentimes, all those names are... Mm, there's no other way to say it. They're pretty conventional and standard, and they might not reflect your newly found soul. And that's not to say to just turn a blind eye, because if a name highly resonates with you, then you've likely found your name. But in most instances, spiritual names, well, they're not typically conventional. And some are completely derived from the person seeking the name. And when that happens, it leads to a unique and one-of-a-kind spirit name. This is the process that I took. As you know by now, the name given to me at birth was Charles. Most people call me Charlie, and I'll still answer to that name, but personally, it, I, don't, I no longer identify with it on any terms, especially relative to my personality. The name I wholly identify with now on every level of my soul is Pharaoh Simo. Every time I say or I hear, Pharaoh Simo, I can feel that it's an intense, I don't know, a connection and resonance to it because it's a combination of words I chose that describe who I am in essence. And as far as I know, I'm the only one with that name. And in my opinion, that is how it should be because there is only one you, but that's just what resonates with me. And if you're wondering the meaning, I'll get to that here in just a second when I explain how I chose the name but keep in mind as simplistic as this explanation might sound this took me about mm, three weeks of doing this process combined with meditation with the mantra being the notion of naming nomenclature I took qualities that I felt described me and were true to me on the just on the deepest levels. This should be on the level of your soul and not the outer layer of the personality. For example, if you're blonde, you wouldn't necessarily want to incorporate that into your spiritual name because it's only the vessel of your soul that has blonde hair and not the soul itself. You get what I mean? You want a description of the essence of who you are. The essence of your soul. Now, since my awakening, a lot of people know me in association to being someone who seeks light, and they're correct to associate that to me. I've made, I've made it a point to build myself around the notion of light. I'm like a moth, okay? I'm like the Essenes. So I used the word light for 
one of these trait words to pick out my name. Now, I'm also, despite my wishes sometimes, but it's just who I am on a soul level, I'm a pretty emotional person, okay? So the other word I used was emotional. And when I had these two trait words, I put them side by side and it resonated with me. Emotional light. Um, it, it resonated so highly with me, but the thing is that didn't quite feel like a name to me, emotional light, as much as it did resonate. So I looked through a thesaurus and I looked up all the synonyms I could find for both emotion and light. And the one I finally found for light was pharos. And the definition of that roughly is it's a lighthouse or a beacon that guides. So guiding light, that intensely resonated with me because I'll offer all of myself to anyone else seeking light. So then I had emotional left and I had written it next to Pharaoh's as such, Pharaoh's emotional. Now, music is a huge aspect to one's soul. The music you love, you connect to on a soul level and Based off my music taste, my brain automatically associated emotional with emo, and it just clicked. Pharos emo. Pharos emo. And when I said that out loud for the first time, I knew, I knew that was it. I, I found my identity. It shook me to the core in the most brilliant and positive way. Pharos emo. An emotional and guiding light.